Thanks and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I feel like I have a very big challenge in front of me today. Uh, your, your heads are full at this point in time. You've heard about a dozen great presentations. This has been a fantastic day in terms of the conference. And do you have room for one more idea? So I feel like I have to tell you what the idea is up front. It's a very simple idea. And then after I tell you what the idea is, we'll go through the presentation and we'll explain what the idea is. The simple idea is that web equals publishing, which is another way of saying publishing equals web. Now, when I say words like that to people in the web community, usually they say to me things like, uh, duh, yeah, of course, uh, we all know that. And when I say the exact same things to folks in the book publishing industry, publishing in general, but book publishing particularly, they say, Jeff, you, know, you don't understand the publishing industry. So what I'm going to try to do today is, first of all, explain what I mean by saying web equals publishing, talk about what's hard about making that into a reality, and then finally take you through some of the steps that we're taking within W3C and working with our colleagues in the publishing community to make that into a reality. So preliminaries, let's just start with some of the history. 20 years ago, the web came out of nowhere and it changed publishing forever. But it changed it in a very specific way. It was great global distribution, a global database, linked documents, low barriers to entry. Everyone became a publisher. And so really it became a new additional form of publishing. But at the same time, no substitute for print. If you were creating high quality premium content, you know, there's lots of reasons that you would not go to the web. Low res screens, the layout, the styling, Nothing like what's available in magazines, uh, static, read-only. So it was a new form of publishing, but it wasn't at all dominant in the publishing industry, but still it was good enough for innovation. So businesses flocked to the web. Here's a new way to push content out there. New revenue models appeared, tools came out, and really made everyone into a publisher. And we just heard from Evan and Douglas about all the work that's progressed with in terms of blogs and wikis and the like. So a lot of progress over there. So that was 20 years ago. And then you all know the web grew and grew and grew. And so more recently, we've seen a tremendous number of technology trends that have further impacted the web, made it a much more rich place for getting our work done. The internet is everywhere. Geography is not a barrier. Cloud computing, social, broadband, mobility. A lot of core technology changes have made the web an even richer place as a publishing mechanism. Simultaneously, let's also keep in mind the social impacts, which we actually just heard about in the last keynotes, in terms of how do people consume information. And I would add that it's not only how do people in general consume in information, but there's a generational divide. So the way that we consume information is different than how our kids do or will consume information. And that means that whatever our model is of publishing and consuming the published word needs to keep track with what the next generation is going to be thinking about. So 20 years ago, we introduced the web and we had a certain kind of impact on publishing. And now, with these tectonic shifts, I would say we have a more significant impact on, on publishing. 25% of Americans own a tablet. Magazines, like Newsweek, digital only. So there's different forms of publishing. There's blogs. There's information about companies. Now, magazines. Uh, there's advertisements, which is, of course, the uh, funding that fuels a lot of the businesses. And today, Google ad revenue exceeds more, exceeds the US print rev ad revenues combined. 
but you know, give me your trusty book. That's not a web thing. Well, uh, as you all know, ebooks, triple digit growth. And ebooks are built very much on web technology. So we've gone from a first generation of an additional publishing mechanism called the web to substantial impact throughout the entire publishing ecosystem. Every single different kind of publishing affected in one way or another by web technologies. So what's going to come in the future? Where is this all going? Well, I believe, and I think it's not too hard to see, that the impact will continue. And it will intensify. It will intensify because the medium is getting more comfortable, because of social trends and generational trends, and also because of the additional things that we are working on in web technology to make it an even better technology base for even more kinds of publishing. So in the web technology area, we're working on screens, better screens, better typography, layout. That's core technology for the delivery of the published information. But then there is the value of the web inherently, which has always been there. It's linkiness. The fact that when you publish, you publish not only your piece of information, but you can relate it to so many other things. And now we've introduced rich media into the web. So the web, get, the, the web will get better in things that print used to do. And the web is already better for certain things. And that all drives business model innovation at the same time. And then the consumer behavior. So the fact that people want to get their content across multiple devices is more easily enabled with digital, with rich content, with the communications capability of the web. The fact that there is a social element to sharing, to commenting about what you're reading is easier on the web. And the much criticized time slicing, which is how people lead their lives, is natural in the web. Uh, more natural than in the printed matter. The fact that the web is transformative for publishing is actually not limited to, to publishing. The fact of the matter is that the seismic shifts that result from the current generation of the web, rich multimedia on the web, touching every single device, touching everywhere, is creating massive, massive changes in every single industry out there. Healthcare, um, games, data integration, entertainment. But we think that the impact around publishing is actually will be more significant than the impact on other industries. You know, one of the interesting industries, it's almost a sister industry to the publishing industry, is TV, movies, entertainment. And we've all seen that in a very short time, again, driven partly by generational and social trends, entertainment is moving from traditional devices, from the television set, to uh, the web as the, as the primary uh, delivery uh, mechanism. And you see that in new services, uh, companies like Hulu. You see that, again, in the behavior of the youth who increasingly don't get their content from traditional entertainment deliveries. We also see an increasing integration of social networking with entertainment, with television, and, and the time slicing. People are on the web when they're watching television. They're learning people's, they're talking to their colleagues. They're getting impressions about this particular sporting event. They're doing all these things simultaneously, and that's all more, na all more, all more natural on the web. But the reason that I say that publishing is unlike the other industries is that the delivery, what you're, trying to, what you're trying to use the web for, is different inherently for publishing than it is for the other industries. So if I want to use the web as a vehicle for entertainment, at the end of the day, what I really want to do is entertain people. If I want to use it as a vehicle for, for healthcare, I'm trying to improve someone's health. I'm not trying to, to publish information per se. I have an end goal which is above and beyond the publishing nature of the web.
But while it's different for those industries, for the traditional publishing industry and, pu and the traditional web industry, they're really the same. They're all about taking ideas from people's brains, putting them down, recording them somehow, and getting them transmitted everywhere. So because of the fact that the web is more intimately tied to the, in the, to the intrinsic purpose of publishing, we're seeing a need for our communities to get closer together. Part of the publishing community has been uh, with the web, has been very close and affinitive with the web for 20 years, and, and this conversation is very natural for them. For other parts of the publishing community, um, less so magazines, more so books, this is all new. And today, ebooks, for example, are heavily using web technology. The standard for ebooks is EPUB. EPUB is based on W3C recommendations such as HTML5 and CSS3. So we're seeing the start of a journey, and tomorrow we think that they will, everyone's going to get there, everyone's going to get to the same destination, everyone will be more fully part of the web. So although today there are still these pockets that are different, what will the situation be tomorrow? I ask you, what will the situation be tomorrow? I ask you again, were you listening? What will the situation be tomorrow? Gee. <laughs> publishing equals web. So all publishing technology, all publishing mechanisms will be based on the web. Today we've created something called the Open Web Platform. It's based on HTML5, which has now reached a stable state. We have rich, beautiful, interactive, intelligent web pages, dynamic. They're, they're used as web pages. They're, the same technology is used for web apps. It runs on every device, everywhere, has links, with, have, has links to social networking. We have a technology which is the most interoperable in the industry and the most interoperable in the history. So someone who wants to read a, a particular document or a book and wants to be able to do it on a PC or on an e-book or a tablet, they should be able to do all those things because it's all based on the same technology. We've started to look at how people are using this new open web platform. How many people are still on HTML4? How many are using HTML5? How many are using CSS3? And we're beyond the early adopters. We're now in what analysts talk, call the early majority. Just about everyone has started to move to this technology. And we see it in all sorts of apps in the, financial, in the publishing industry. Financial Times, New York Times, uh, The Economist. Great examples of, of apps that were developed recently using the open web platform. Now, it's easy to say, and it's hard to do. Because one of the sad rea realities is that the web community and the publishing technical community has not been talking to each other sufficiently to solve the problems to make this intuitively obvious result of web equals publishing into a reality. Thanks to O'Reilly and a workshop that they hosted earlier this week, uh, we're starting that conversation. We had an ebooks workshop earlier this week in which browser vendors, webisons, and publishers came together. And they made some observations. They said, gee, you know, we, we're using the same technology base, but we're not talking enough, and that's causing a lot of sub-optimization. And the sub-optimization means that we can't achieve the reality. We can't get to the ultimate place. But if we talk a little bit more, maybe we can. And that's the agenda that we've set for ourselves that we agreed to earlier this week to intensify the conversation and bring us to a place where the technology base of the web really is suitable for publishing. W3C started a conversation like this with the entertainment industry several years ago. Uh, and it was the same kind of experience. A bunch of strangers talking to each other. Different vocabularies, different priorities. And we ran a few workshops. And the TV industry set up a, a W3C interest group. And now we've moved to a point where we are developing enhancements to HTML5 
based on very specific needs that they have in streaming media, in accessibility, in multi-track, and, and, in, and in content protection. So we're going to do the same thing now with the publishing industry. And I think that there are four major categories of work which we've set for ourselves as a priority and which we need to address and solve in the next several months or years. Those categories are, first of all, to matching current publishing practices. There's a lot of very significant technology in, in different parts of the publishing biz business, which is easy to do on the web, but we don't do it on the web because we haven't had the conversation. So we need to do that. The web, as I said earlier, provides a lot of nifty things. And if that were more better incorporated into publishing, then we'd all win. So we have to leverage the value add of the, of the web. This is going to drive us to different business models and distribution models. And finally, we have to be mindful as we are doing this that our consumers, the consumer of the published word, is changing in terms of their tastes and in terms of their expectations. So what are some examples? In terms of matching the current publishing practices, I already mentioned some of these earlier. Typography, fonts. We have a whole new fonts framework. Support of colors, more natural colors on the web. Adaptive layout, the kind of very sophisticated layout, text hugging images in a printed magazine. It's hard to do that on the web, but we can introduce new technology to make that simpler. And readability of long text, there's this whole question of, is a book a book, or is a book something that I start reading until I find the first link. And, and, and I don't know the social answer to that, but I know that we better have the technology to allow all different variations of those models to exist. Leveraging the value add of the web. I talked about links earlier. The rich media available with HTML5, CSS3, our graphics framework, our fonts framework, video, data integration. There's a lot of stuff that exists on the web in terms of metadata, which is natural for annotations, for cataloging, for specialized search, and we need to bring those two closer together. The cross-device support, which I mentioned earlier, because I want to read my content on different devices. Accessibility is core to the web, and it's even more core in the future because of its criticality for government services, and it's equally core for publishing, but it's going to be much easier to develop accessible content if you're on an electronic media that is dedicated to accessibility. In terms of different distribution models, subscription models, ad insertion, social sharing, product placement, lots of indirect ways of monetizing the published word are available on the web. We need to work on payment uh, frameworks. We need to work on content protection as fundamental pieces of that as well. And finally, building all this in a way which satisfies the diverse consumer behaviors, the fact that I want my information anywhere, anytime, different devices. I want to be able to share it with my social network, and I want to be able to support it in a time-sliced fashion. So we have four categories of work that we think we need to address. We had a great meeting earlier this week. Again, thanks to O'Reilly for the uh, sponsorship of that, work, of, of that workshop. But we're only at the beginning of a conversation. So I ask everyone to please work with all of us in keeping the conversation going and making a web which is truly ideal for publishing. Thank you, and have a good afternoon.